Hi, I'm Fred, and today I'll be painting a self-portrait with still life as part of a contest that Slew is putting on here on YouTube. Another ride of my echoey new craft room. I'm doing this painting on a piece of Luan. It was a scrap from a set build I did. I think it's been run over by a car. It's hard to tell. It's 15 and a half by 19 and a half, and those numbers are very specific to a frame I already owned, so it's cut to fit in there. And I'm using acrylics. Cheap, cheap acrylics. I'm going for like kind of the wall color in the room here, because that's where my picture was taken. But I also like a little variation in the background, kind of sets things off. And the dark on the right kind of gives us a little bit of a hint of a corner in the wall of the room. Starting with painting a canvas on a canvas, this was already a little surreal, but I like my subject matter here. I actually did this still life in an hour long break at work. You know, one of those like get together and paint for an hour, team building exercise. And uh, it's always bothered me um, that I forgot the shadows on the fruit. I'm using very cheap paints, very cheap brushes, and essentially a child's palette. I had them all except I couldn't find my other cheap brushes, I had to buy some new cheap brushes. Thumb eraser there, always good to use. I've always kind of disliked still life. I've never done like much formal art training, but going back at least to seventh grade, we had to do still life. Not a fan. I mean, I see the use of it, and yeah, absolutely, we should all do more still life. It's just, it's not exciting. Honestly, landscape is more exciting because it's just there. People, even when they're sitting still, more exciting because they're people. Still life is more of a reminder that I need to clean my counters. I debated on whether or not drawing the entire thing on the canvas first, but I decided just to go with the shape of my head and face. I don't have a specific technique. It's been almost 10 years since I did my last self-portrait. So based on things I've been learning since then, I started with a little shadow and highlights just to kind of give me an idea of the shape and where the light was. The picture you see me working off is something I just took with my phone and chopped down to the right dimensions for my board. That way I kind of knew where everything cut off. You can see me there for a second checking my own skin tone to try to get the color. And I got it wrong. This is not the last time in this painting I get my skin tone wrong, but I get there in the end. <laughs> At this point, you know, it already looks like me, even though there's almost no details and the mouth is just a gaping void. I started with the still life on this because I needed to kind of ease my way back into painting. I don't do it very often. I always like doing it, always have liked doing it. I don't practice a lot. Which makes the results of this pretty impressive when you see the last self-portrait I did. Don't ask me if these are peaches or pears. Don't ask me why I block the shot half the time when I'm painting them. Put in the shirt never occurred to me to actually do the design on it. I was just wearing whatever shirt. I could have chosen a different color. I went with the color that was on, mostly just a dark gray. 
It's an odd choice when it takes up, you know, a quarter of a portrait, but I think it actually works in the final results. I called these paints cheap earlier, and they're okay. Like, they're not the cheapest you can get. Like, they're low mid. The darks cover well, the lights don't cover well at all, which is kind of an ongoing issue. found in the past if you make your the whites of your eyes too bright they look unnatural so I was using a little bit darker and then bright red lipstick it's just like the skin tone it's a starting spot to get you know locations and shapes <laughs> second skin tone starting off this one's more yellow and bright now this painting was done in less than three hours but over the course of like two weeks or so um, in some ways I don't recommend that because uh, it's harder to match colors that way in other ways it helped me think through the next step of the process and going back to the colors it actually made it so I was less likely to keep what the bad skin tones as I went on. I kept these to the side that I was using like three basic colors. I kept them aside to know what values I was using, but I really changed up the way I was mixing them and if I added any, you know, white or black to lighten or darken it. At this point I can only describe it as annoying orange luchador mask. The thing about with paintings of any kind, especially a portrait, especially, especially a self-portrait is, it looks awful until it doesn't. And so every little step I'm doing here, the whole point is to make it look less and less awful, or, you know, a more positive way would see in more and more better. <laughs> Maybe not more and more better, but better. And so sometimes, you know, I'm taking steps back to restart and so it may look worse step by step, but overall it goes, it all kind of funnels into a better result, which is what we're going for. Eyebrows and the start of the outline of hair makes her look practically human. This also would have been easier if I, you know, got a haircut before taking my reference photo. Ah oh, yes, if I'm not blocking the camera, I'm blocking the light. And back to trying to cover up a dark blue bottle with bright yellow paint. Added some irises so I actually have C instead of purple eyes. And if you look back to like the first potato of head I had drawn, like already I was impressed with how much it looked like myself. You would think with a rounder head to be easier, but there's a lot of little vagaries and details on everyone's face that, you know, kind of describes them as them. At this stage, I'm fully into the Homer Simpson look. Little bit yellow skin there, little bit. So I'm lighting up the skin starting with the arm because I never know what the, uh, the top layer is going to look like. <laughs> because the arm isn't the focus, it's a good spot to kind of test things out and try things out. But 
then yeah, going overboard. Covered up the yellow, covered up a lot of the shading. Using a lighter color though, this is where the cheapness of the paint works to my benefit. You could water down your acrylics to thin them out, of course, but they don't go on as well. And they don't go on a way I'd prefer. And so in this case, I kind of like the, the, the fact that I was working with a very thinner paint already to begin with. You can see here I'm going between the palette and the brush because I've got variations of the color everywhere. And it's kind of whatever I want at the time that dictates where I'm pulling the paint from. to focus on my hand in the foreground, helpful. Adding more and more details as we go in. I'm kind of old, I've got a lined face. I have to add a lot of different colors in to make it look like me. so I can see. The last probably hour of the nearly three was just doing detail work on the mostly my face. Just trying to get everything right. You know, I've got a lot of variations in my beard color, my hair color, which I was trying to get out. Um, adding multiple colors is not like one solid. Some some people do have fairly solid colored hair. I do not. Um, it's changed over the over the years, and of course I'm graying now, and so we've got a lot of lights and highlights in it. So a lot of those details I wanted to work on. And rather than trying to do some stippling for you know the five o'clock shadow, because as soon as I shave it, it starts growing back instantly, just try to make it a little bit darker to highlight you know my chubby chin. Now we just clean up the edges. My neck isn't quite that bad. And here we see a problem where I couldn't get the colors exactly right. This is much bluer. I used the wrong quote unquote violet in my paint set because I didn't know which one I started with two weeks before. But that's okay. I knew it was a possibility. Kind of correct the shapes as I want and then blend it into the background. And now that's just an additional color we use. We hide our mistakes by creating more mistakes. Therefore, it's not a mistake. Final touch-ups on the shirt. I wanted to make sure that I got the lines a little bit better and kind of add more of the layers of the fabric so it looks a little bit more natural. I sort of followed the lines that I could see in the picture, but not completely. Um, I'm not going complete realism here, so it's all, you get the impression of what's going on. And then I can't help myself from one more attempt. <laughs> I covered up the bottle. I don't know if these are peaches or apples or whatever. I just call them fruit. 
I have done since I painted the original picture. They're just fruit. And we're done with painting. Oh wait, your painting's not done until you sign it. I usually like to sign with a Sharpie. I was having problems using the paintbrush, ironically. And here it is in the final frame. If you want to watch the entire painting with no cuts, I'll soon be uploading a video of that. Thank you for watching. I'll catch everyone later.